Welcome to my transparent watercolor negative painting tutorial, Hydrangea. This is a narrated step-by-step -step tutorial with portions at normal speed and portions at 3x speed. The photo on the right was a reference and inspiration for this painting. While it looks like a very limited palette, there were actually a number of colors used. The colors that I used for this painting were sap green, pyrrole red, royal blue, three colors that I often use. I also used viridian, cerulean blue, aureolan, and cadmium yellow. I've already done some preparation on the painting surface by doing some masking ahead of time. I wanted to protect the clean edges of the flower. That's a very irregular edge and I wanted to keep nice clean sharp edges so I masked the edges of that as well as some of the highlights on the leaves and the stem shapes. I'm beginning to apply a loose wash. This is wet on dry with a one inch flat brush. And this is a mixture of sap green with a little pyrrole red and some aureolan, which is a cooler yellow. I'm using this yellow green tone to uh, indicate the areas where the sunlight's gonna be coming through and it will be hitting the leaves. And now I'm going to work in a darker tone, which is um, a uh, sap green and royal blue mixture. And it also has a little pyrrole red in it. One of the things I'll point out is the original photograph I was using for reference had a brick wall in that top right quadrant. And I've made the decision that rather than put the brick wall in, I'm just going to give a suggestion of more foliage. I want this to be... Uh, the entire composition to be one of flowers and foliage so I've opted not to include that brick wall. I'm, I've covered most of the uh, background with a variety of green tones and now I'm using this fine mist spray bottle to soften some of the edges and gradate uh, some of the tones from one into the other. I'm coming in with a cooler mixture of green. This is a, a mixture of viridian and royal blue. And I'm just working my way around the composition, giving the suggestion of overlapping uh, foliage and uh, vines and stems. Here again, I'm using the Fimus spray to soften some of these shapes that I've just put in. Uh, with this cooler tone. As I apply these washes, I'm trying to, to build layers and start to create depth in this composition. These lighter, warmer, uh, yellowish greens are going to be more in the foreground and I'm using these cooler green tones that I'm applying to build layers that are going to work their way back into space. Now I want to lift this uh, masking fluid that I've applied be earlier in my process before I started to paint so that I can reveal these um, clean white edges that I protected uh, underneath the, the washes that I applied. Here you can see this um, flower shape here that is going to be my center of interest. Um, the clean edges have been well preserved by the masking fluid. I'm going to be doing some painting on this, the, the, the center of this flower that's going to be kind of in a shadowed area. So I, I want to res still preserve a few small light highlights. So I'm going back in with a little bit of masking fluid using a fine line masking fluid pen and just touching a few uh, areas with this masking fluid so that I can preserve some some very small highlighted shapes. 
I'm trying to create the suggestion that the light is coming from behind on this and the actual center and the, the area of the flower that is most in the foreground is actually somewhat shadowed. So to do this, I'm going to build a few layers here, starting with this uh, warmer, brighter mixture of uh, aureolin and sap green. And I'm going to build some other layers on top of that with a little bit cooler tones. I've dried the first layer, which is very light, and now I'm coming in with a much brighter uh, tone. It has more pigment in this mixture. And after I apply this with my wash brush, I'm going to hit it with this fine mist sprayer to soften those edges and diffuse this color a little bit. I've dried those brighter tones and now I'm going to use a cooler mixture of uh, Viridian and Cerulean Blue the, to put some of the, the center of this flower and the area that's more in the foreground actually in shade and trying to give suggestion that that flower is backlit. Now I'm using a uh, a blue mixture of cerulean with a little bit of royal blue mixed in to really cool down that shaded area. Next I want to start to develop further the uh, perception of depth in my composition so I'm starting to come in with a smaller brush and a darker value and I'm starting to be more deliberate with my uh, application of paint. When you start working this way, you're almost uh, carving the shapes out in negative space. Notice as I make these shapes with my brush, there's not a lot of fussing around. I just put down the, the pigment with my brush, I just make a statement with my brush, and then I just move on. So I don't sit here and fiddle with it a lot. I just try and keep it fresh, keep the wash clean, I don't overwork it. You'll notice that as I've started to build these darker values, I've uh, started in the area that's around my center of interest. That's Most often that's how I begin my painting. I start with uh, larger shapes, larger washes, and then I start to, to work with um, smaller shapes, darker values, start to use smaller brushes, and I normally start to develop that uh, value contrast around my center of interest first. Here I'm using uh, a quill brush I like to use for um, some very specific uh, detail areas. And I'm using a very dark value now. And this brush has a very sharp point and it's, it's very good for detail work. You can see I'm starting to get a suggestion of these dark shapes uh, near some very uh, light valued areas of this flower and it gives a suggestion that you're, you're seeing through the foliage to the back and it's starting to build some depth behind that flower. Too often I think people sit down to do a flower painting and they paint a flower and then they ask the question, does it need a background? Um, I have a hard time working that way myself. I normally like to develop the whole composition and you can't just paint a flower and then stick a background uh, behind it. I don't, I don't feel have it to be very successful. I think it all has to develop as a unit and you, you need to design your background just as much as you do any other part of your um, composition. Now I'm going to start moving out to other areas of my composition and start to build some of these darker values. I'm moving away from my center of interest and starting to develop the whole painting. 
What I'm about to do here, I think some people find it difficult to do. I've got this area to the right of this flower that I've got quite a bit of brushwork done, but I want it to feel more like a, uh, a, a shape rather than a bunch of disjointed brush strokes. So I'm coming um, in with a darker glaze and this is a nice soft wash brush that I like to use. And I'm uh, using this wash to try and help separate this flower from the background just a little bit more and make it feel like that area is going back and it's a larger shape in the background there. The nice thing with working with the transparent watercolors though is all that brushwork will still come through. Once I dry this, this wash will lighten a little bit. And I'll still have all those nuances of the brush strokes, but it'll feel more like a one dark larger shape um, instead of a bunch of little brush strokes. And it's more of a, a resting place for the eye. It gets too busy if you just have the same uh, small short stroke brush strokes in an area like that. It's, it's, uh, this wash tends to tie it together more. I've reached a point in my process where I've got a lot of this brush work to do um, where I'm putting in some very deliberate shapes and uh, I'll be working across the whole composition and it can take a while. So in order to, to keep this moving along and still be able to see what I'm doing without getting too monotonous, I'm going to speed this up, cue up a little bit of music, and then I'll pick it back up a little bit down the road. back and I'm still doing some of this brush work and I've got uh, probably my darkest values yet and I just work around the composition putting in some of these dark shapes where I think it can really help strengthen um, the composition overall building some contrast and you can see that these darker values 
um, give the suggestion that we're going farther back in space. I've skipped ahead a bit here. I've continued to, to do uh, a lot of this detailed brush work. And you can see I, I work a shape, like this dark shape. I'm working, uh, I'm interrupting that, that linear shape, giving the suggestion that there's another lighter shape going over top of it. It's just a nice way to create overlap, which in turn helps create perception of depth. It's like I like to start by making a mark on one side of a shape and then picking it up on the other side of the shape. And I try and break these uh, the sh these shapes up. So if, if I'm going to make a linear mark, um, I often will stop short of the, the full distance of travel, pick my brush up and move a little bit and then pick it up again. Just giving lost and found edges, it just builds more interest into the composition. As I continue to work, uh, putting in some of these shapes and building my values, you can see that this takes a little bit of patience, takes a little bit of time. Here I'm removing the small areas of masking fluid that I applied midway. It's not much, it's just a few little specks of highlight that I saved. And here I'm doing some glazing. I've come in with a warm yellow over some of the leaf shapes and now I'm coming in with a cooler uh, green. Again, just to try and tie some areas together. And I want that area in that top right corner to feel like it's going back a little bit more. So I'm coming in with a darker tone over the top of that just to push that back a little bit more and bring some of the uh, foreground uh, forward. I want to enhance that feeling of light on some of these lighter areas in the composition. So I'm coming in with a more intense color, uh, a bright green. It's actually aureolan with spring green and um, just giving a the suggestion of that light coming in. And I'm using the contrast of the more neutral dark tones that are juxtapositioned to it along these brighter tones that I'm now putting in to try and draw the eye in and give some highlighted areas with color, not just uh, the, the light and dark. Now I'm going to do a little bit of lifting with a, uh, a damp brush. So I just have clear water on this and it's a flat brush and I'm just dragging across the surface and you can see where it's lifting up some of the pigment and creates some nice linear shapes. And one of the things, the nice effects you can get when you do this, as you drag the brush across a darker pigment, uh, it, it drags that, that tone onto a lighter area and so you get that light on dark and dark on light feeling of that linear shape as it moves across your composition. And you have to experiment with your brushes um, to see which ones work best for you. I have a couple that I like to use for lifting like this. They're, uh, they have, they're a little bit stiff but not too much but in the hold water and um, they just uh, do a nice job of, of lifting when I need it. Now I'm going to do a little bit more detailed brushwork with the dark value and I'm going to try and position some of these very small dark shapes um, near some lighter areas to get some nice contrast and help make things pop a little bit more and actually help build that depth again. So you can see I'm being very deliberate with my brush strokes, not near as loose as I was early in my process. And here I like to put some of these um, little dark shapes uh, and some of these lighter areas.
And here's a good example of some of these small dark shapes in, the, in these lighter bright areas. You get a nice contrast. I try not to overdo it, but I work my way around the composition just trying to give um, help build that contrast across the whole composition and it's a constant building process that I do as I've gone from my early washes to where I'm at now and I'm being very deliberate and with the small marks that I'm making on the composition. I want some separation between this flower shape in the background and this leaf so I'm just taking a cool wash and touching the paper there behind that leaf and then softening that edge with that spray bottle. Just as I did some lifting uh, to create some linear shapes, uh, I'm doing the opposite now. I'm coming in with a fine line rigger brush with a very dark tone and I'm giving the suggestion of these uh, dark valued linear shapes moving through the composition kind of weaving through and I try to give the suggestion that it goes uh, over top of some shapes and goes behind other shapes for instance here I I stop on one edge of that leaf shape and pick it up on the other side As I wind this painting down, I want to mention that I've been experimenting with the format of some of my videos here. I've, I've uh, done some that are just sped up to music and others that are narrated have step by step. And this one's kind of a combination of the two. But I appreciate anybody's input or comments you might have on the format that you like best and what you think is most informative for you or works the best. Um, go ahead and comment and let me know. And I can uh, that will help me improve my videos for the future. And that's my painting Hydrania. There's a lot of negative painting going on, a lot of brush strokes. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe so you get notification of my videos for the future. And if you do have suggestions on how I can improve or if there's things that you like, let me know in the comments area.